Hello, Sebastian Lacido here, and welcome to Line Upon Line, where we study a book of the Bible verse by verse. We're in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. We're going to finish chapter 9 today. It's a great chapter. It's regarding Daniel's 70 weeks. It's a prophetic uh, vision that Daniel got that really tells us about the tribulation period, and he prophesies the death of Christ and uh, destruction of the temple and the city. So let's open in Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. It says, In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over Babylon's kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scripture, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord and pleaded with him in prayer and petition and fasting in sackcloth and ashes. So Daniel understood by reading Jer- the book of Jeremiah, who is a contemporary of him, uh, he's a, uh, uh, somewhat before him, uh, but in, during the same time period. So he reads in Jeremiah that they would be in captivity and, and the city would be destroyed for 70 years. So Daniel understood stood by reading the Bible as we can understand the time we're in by reading the Bible. Uh, Israel went into captivity, the temple was destroyed, and Jerusalem was ransacked and destroyed because uh, they were unfaithful and sinned against the word of God. And so that, that sin was that there were supposed to be seed time and harvest for six years, and then in the seventh year, they would have a Sabbath year where they wouldn't have seed time and harvest. So seed time and harvest for six years in the sixth year, they would have a double uh, harvest. The seventh year, the land would rest. So they didn't do this for 70 cycles. So for 490 years, they did not let the land rest. So that, that 70 Sabbath years, 490 years, the land didn't rest. And so God sent them into captivity. The Babylonians took them over, uh, and then the Persians took over the Babylonians, while Daniel was in captivity, so 70 years of rest came to Jerusalem, the city, and the fields of Israel. And so God got his way. So now as this 70 years is drawing near to uh, an end, because at this point in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel's getting older, and so he knows it's coming to the end. And verse 3 said, he turned to the Lord, pleaded with him in prayer, petition and fasting, and sackcloth and ashes. And so the, you know, uh, it was uh, very profound. Uh, there are several contemporaries of Daniel. A lot of the prophets were written in captivity, before captivity, in captivity, or after captivity. So here's Daniel's prayer. It's uh, the next, I think, 15 verses. I'm going to read the prayer. It, verse 4 says, I prayed to the Lord God and confessed. Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love, to those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commandments and law. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in uh, in your name or to our kings, our princes, our ancestors, to all the people in the land. He said, Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. And the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all of Israel, both near and far, and all of the countries where you have scattered them because of our unfaithfulness to you, we and our kings, our princes, our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the, uh, the, the Lord, our God, or kept his laws that he gave us, that through his servants, the prophets, all of Israel has transgressed the law and turned away and refused to obey you. Therefore, the curse and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us. Because we have sinned against you, you have fulfilled your word spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing us in this great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord, 
our God, by turning from our sins, giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring disaster upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Now, Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, who made yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned and we have done wrong. Lord, in keeping with all of your righteous acts, turn away your anger, your wrath from us in Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and our iniquities and our, of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn uh, around us. Now, our God, hear our prayers, petitions of your servants. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear. Lord, act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people hear your name. That's a lot of reading. It's one continuous prayer. There's no way to break it up. But I, there's a couple of good revelation points that I think we need to pull from it. Uh, in prayer, we see a very good prayer here of how Daniel stayed very humble, who did not, sh uh, you know, uh, 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 throw off the responsibility of the obedience. Uh, and because of the sin and unfaithfulness, not in his generation, you have to remember, he went into captivity, he was probably 14 years old. Uh, this, this had to do with 490 years, almost five centuries before of sin and unfaithfulness brought this group of people into God's judgment. And so Daniel was very eloquent in his prayers, but he prayed for the nation, the city, uh, and his people. He admitted their sins and their unfaithfulness, and he didn't try to uh, you know, put off responsibility he looked responsibility in the eye and took it. He reminded God of his covenant plan, his love, and that there was a plan for the land and uh, the people of Israel, his old covenant people. He was wise in asking you know, for mercy, love, and leaning on God's attributes. We should do that in prayer. And you can tell that he knows God. You can tell that he has a very good understanding of God and how he works, because he leaned on covenant, he leaned on mercy, he leaned on forgiveness, he leaned on, you know, don't, don't do this for our righteousness, do this because of this is who you are, amen? And so at the end of this, at the end of this prayer, in verse 20, through the end of the chapter, we have some of the most profound prophetic verses in scripture. So let's get started, verse 20. It says, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel, making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, that's the angel Gabriel, the man I had seen in earlier vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you. For you are highly esteemed, therefore consider the word and understand the vision. <clears throat> Here we go. Verse 24. Seventy sevens. Literally, it says 70 weeks. So if I said to you uh, a dozen, you would know it's 12. The word here is Shabawa in, in, uh, in Hebrew. And it means a group of seven. So 70 groups of seven. 70 groups of seven is 490. 70 times seven is 490. 70 groups of seven are decreed upon your people, your holy city, to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. <clears throat> so in one verse, uh, Gabriel tells Daniel about a 490-year period of time. This is known as Daniel's 70 weeks. Uh, again, the word week uh, means seven. 
So 77s are 490 years. He, let me read it amplified. So 490 years are decreed for your people, your holy city, to one, finish the transgression, make an end of sin, make reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up or complete the vision and prophecy, and anoint the most holy. So he's basically, basically saying the completion of you know, God's plan, purpose, and prophecy for the earth and fallen man are going to come in 490 years. There's going to be no more transgression against God from humanity. Uh, they're going to reconcile the books on sin. Judgment will be done. Those that are righteous will go to heaven. Those that are unrighteous will go to hell. He'll, he'll uh, bring in everlasting righteousness, so things will be sealed for good in righteousness. There'll be a close to all the visions and prophecies of all the prophets, and Jesus will be anointed in his final position. So at the end of the 70 weeks, he's basically saying that the second coming of the Lord is coming. So verse 25, know this, that from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince or the Anointed One comes, there will be seven sevens or 70 weeks, seven weeks and 62 weeks It'll be rebuilt, the city in trenches, but in troublous times. Okay, let's not get confused here. He says, no one understand that from the going forth of the word to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, or the Anointed One will be seven weeks, one period of time, 62 weeks, another period of time. The city will be built in the streets in trouble, in troublous times. So we have two periods of time. We have a seven, 70, seven week period of time or 49 years. And we have a 62 week period of time, 483 years. So what he's saying is at the end of, you know, 49 weeks, you know, at the end of 49 weeks, or 49 years, seven weeks or 49 years, plus 62 weeks or 434 years, right? At the end of that time will be 483 years. Jesus, the temple, the city will be rebuilt and Jesus will be, uh, will, will be on the scene. <clears throat> And, and so we'll see in the next verse that his death will come. So he breaks it up into two verses. This happened. The commandment, picture God with a stop clock, with a, with a stopwatch. The commandment comes to rebuild Jerusalem. That came in 456 B.C. by Artaxerxes, uh, the prophet uh, um, Nehemiah and Ezra. <clears throat> Both spoke of it. The king allowed the Jews to go back and begin the city, build the city and the temple. So he's a Persian king, <clears throat> and he allows the rebuilding of the city and the temple. So when that commandment start, uh, st get, is given, God starts his time clock on this, on this 490 years. So it ticks away 49 years later. It took that time. The first seven-week period or 49 years uh, they started building, uh, rebuilding the temple in the city. They accomplished it, but if you read the writings of the, some of the minor prophets, there were several disruptions that were attacked, so they had to build with a sword on, ready to go to battle. So this took 49 years, or seven of the weeks. Then the second period of time, which, which, it, which is measured, you know, and brings it to 483 years, when you look at it, you know, the second period of time brings them, you know, all the way to uh, Jesus, the life of Jesus, uh, is the second period. And, and the, next verse will <coughs> <coughs> the next verse will tell us that. So after si 62 weeks, so after 62 additional weeks, right, uh, 
you know, that's 434 years after the temple is built. Verse 26, Jesus, the anointed one, the Messiah, will be put to death. It will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come to destroy the city and the sanctuary, the end will come like a flood. Wars will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. So in verse 25, we have the seven weeks or 49 years to rebuild the temple. We get this uh, second 62 weeks explained that after 62 weeks or 434 years after the temple is built, so God has a stop clock, that's 483 years from when the commandment was given, Jesus would be crucified not for himself, but for us. And then he gives a further prophetic, because what happens is, this, after, this, after the 69 weeks, the 7 and the 62, God stops his time clock. He stops it. So after he stops it, the church age begins. During the church age, the second part of verse 26 happens. The people of the ruler of the prince who will come, that's the Antichrist, will come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. Wars will continue until the end and desolations are decreed. So essentially, 483 years after the commandment to build the temple, Jesus is crucified. You know, and, and if you do the math, that's about 27 A.D., so Jesus was born in 4 B.C., believe it or not. Uh, if you look in the Thompson Chain Study Bible, everyone agrees that uh, he wasn't born in 0 or 1 A.D. He was born in 4 B.C. Uh, we know this because of Herod and the history, uh, that in, in, when he was about 30 years old, 33 years old, uh, he was executed. Uh, and so when you add, do the math, rough math, uh, it's about 27, 28 A.D., okay? And so we see the second time period bringing the Messiah, Jesus, his execution, the destruction of the temple, the destruction of the, of the country of Israel, and the destruction of the city. And this all happened in 70 A.D., uh, and um, this was uh, done by Rome, and, you know, so when you look at it, um, the, the, the people that will come uh, and, and who came was Titus, the emperor of Rome, and Tiberius Julius Alexander, who was his uh, second. Uh, really, there's, a, there's a, uh, a message here that Antichrist, if you read Daniel chapter 9, and you also read Daniel chapter 11, will come from Rome. Here it says, the people of the prince that will come. So the prince that came and destroyed the city uh, was uh, the Romans. In chapter 8, the Grecian Empire, the little horn was Antichrist. So most certainly Antichrist will come from Europe. The Roman Empire encompassed all of Europe. It also encompassed uh, you know, East and West Europe as well as the Middle East. And, but uh, the, the prince that came was the leader of Rome, uh, Titus, the Caesar at the time. And so the, the, he brought the destruction of Israel as a nation from 70 AD until 1900 years later, May 14th of 1948. 1900 years later, Israel became a nation. And then in 1967, uh, Israel took over Jerusalem. So for that long of a time period, it was desolate. You know, and, and so uh, Daniel, we have to understand as we read Daniel, as we read the Bible, um, you know, you look at Daniel, it's 12 chapters, 15 pages in our Bible. Daniel lived probably 80 years, 90 years in uh, captivity. Um, 70 for sure before they gave the command to rebuild the temple. 
but he probably wrote volume. If he was alive today, he'd probably have 20 or 30 books written, right? So he had several books. He had lots of prophecies, lots of other things. An interesting fact is that the wise men who came to the birth of Jesus knew the timing and knew the star. <clears throat> Babylon today would be modern-day Iraq. So they came to worship the birth of Jesus, the king of kings, and probably gleaned that from one of Daniel's writings. And so, you know, Daniel sees this. Now, we move on to one of the more interesting scriptures in the Bible, verse 27, and he will confirm a covenant with many for one week. Well, who's he? <clears throat> he is the prince that will come, Antichrist. So let me read that again to you from verse 26. So from verse 26, it says, And the prince of the people who will, co who will come, the prince who will come of the people will destroy the city and the sanctuary. So the prince is Antichrist. So the Antichrist, he will confirm or make an agreement with many nations for one seven-year period of time. So God stopped the clock with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And then we had a 2,000-year gap, almost, between verse 26 and 27 until he confirms a covenant with many for one week, or the last week, the 70th week, and in the middle of the week, so what's the middle of the week? If it's seven years, it's three and a half years. <clears throat> he puts an end to the sacrifice and offerings, and he destroys the temple. He sets the abomination that causes desolation until the end is decreed and poured out on himself. So almost 2,000 years later, <clears throat> Antichrist will make a covenant with many nations that will probably include Israel and Jerusalem going back to the sacrificial system in Israel. I believe that this happens after the Ezekiel 38 war and all of Israel's current enemies, you know, Syria, Turkey, Iran, Northern Africa, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, all of them along with other nations will all be destroyed. I believe that they build the temple, and from that war, though, comes a seven-year agreement to build, allow them to build the temple. Now, they took the, the nation was reestablished <clears throat> in uh, 1948. Jerusalem came into their control in 67, but the temple has to be rebuilt. So when the temple is rebuilt, and they have this seven-year agreement, <clears throat> and the Jews go back to the sacrificial system, Naturally, it's meaningless because we have the Holy Spirit in us, right? Three and a half years in, he's going to break that covenant by causing them to stop the sacrifices. The abomination of desolation is him actually going into the temple and erecting the holiest place and erecting an image of himself and proclaiming himself to be God and this begins great tribulation. So <clears throat> uh, basically the last three and a half years, or just short of that, before Jesus returns, the earth will be in great tribulation. Antichrist and Satan will control and rule and destroy the earth and those that are against them. And disaster will ensue on the earth where Antichrist will try to eradicate Christians, Christianity, the Jews, anything to do with God and his covenants. And he'll destroy. So, you know, but the fascinating part is Daniel's seen the timing of the building of the temple because he was praying to God knowing that their end of captivity was coming. Seen, you know, uh, uh, 50 years in advance, 49 years in advance at the building of the temple and the city. Then he's seen 434 years in advance of that. Remember, this is five centuries ahead of him. He sees Jesus being executed, killed, but not for himself. 40 years after that, he sees the destruction of the temple and Israel and Jerusalem. And then 2,000 years after that, 
He sees Israel becoming a nation, Jerusalem being rebuilt and back under Israeli control, the temple being built, and Antichrist being uh, having his last seven years or the three and a half years of great tribulation. I mean, what a prophecy to be able to look forward and see that. I mean, you know, in, in, in Daniel, we see a lot of other prophecies in Daniel about the Gentile nations and about the things that are going on. But Daniel 70 weeks is a staple of end times. It gives us a timing period. I mean, you know, when you look back, uh, you know, they were reading the book of Daniel before the New Testament began. They were reading the book of Daniel. <clears throat> you know, it, 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 it happened in 4-something uh, B.C., for, you know, say 50 B.C. You know, that was 500 years before Christ. But, and he prophesied about it with efficiency, just like he prophesied Greece would, uh, would, uh, that, the, that, that he was in Babylonian captivity, that Persia would come in, that Greece would come in and take over uh, Persia, that Rome would come in and take over Greece, that there'd be 2,000 years without a world-dominating power until Antichrist. I mean, what a, what a prophet, what a vision. You know, the word of God is so great. And so that's, that's our broadcast for today. Please share this with family and friends. We're a completely remote ministry. We only grow if you help grow us, if you share our messages. We need you to support us financially. Give $10, $20 a month to help us on our mission. We have 11 broadcasts a week. Every morning, Monday through Saturday, we have a five-minute devotion. It's five minutes. It's a little mini Bible study to start your day. It's on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. It's not on our website. It's on our social media. On Monday, I have Headline and Prophecy, which is on our website and all of social media, which is our censored blog. This last week, we talked about uh, the um, false prophet, uh, technology, artificial intelligence, and the image of the beast. That was this last Monday. Get it? You can get it on our website or you can get it on our social media. Tuesday, last, uh, actually last night, I'm, I'm filming this on Wednesday, I taught on demons, evil, and unclean spirits. Uh, again, that's on our website. We teach every Tuesday a general Bible study. Then line upon line it, uh, is broadcast Thursday morning, early Thursday morning, which is a book of the Bible, verse by verse. We've done two, the book of Revelations. We're currently in the book of Daniel. Then on Friday, I have something called What I Really Think, which is an uncensored blog where I talk about people, places, things, and business, politics, uh, media, uh, current events, and Bible prophecy. This week, if you want to be a part of that, I'm talking about a voice that could be the false prophet uh, and uh, uh, listening to him and how he integrates with the new reset, the one world government, the one world order, and how they look to him as an advisor. So our whole blog tomorrow or Friday on what I really think <clears throat> will study the false prophet and will study the image of the beast, the mark of the beast, and then we'll talk about the things that he's saying which correlate to that. You have to be a member of our website and a partner to get that. That's emailed. It's not on social media. It's not on our website. It's a private blog, so it's emailed to our database. And then Saturday morning I teach eschatology, end times. This week I'm starting a three-week series on Antichrist, talking about this man that will come on the earth. So you can join us live at any of those or get them after on our website. We have notes for all of these. Today's notes were six pages long. You know, and the notes have graphs and other things in them. Uh, today's graph, you know, was on um, the, uh, the 70 weeks showing a visual. You get those by merely signing up as a web member, which is free, your name and email address. Please pray about sharing this. Please uh, join us as a partner. Give us $10, $20 a week, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. And then also, uh, please use our ministry. Use all of our, all of our broadcasts. We have curriculums and workbooks. You can order work, workbooks for free. If you have a community group at home with 10 people, you just order 10 books, pay the shipping. You pay the shipping, you get the books for free. You get the DVDs for free. So it's all free. Uh, we do that because of our partners that are giving 10, 20, 50, 100, and, and more a month. 
Anyway, God bless you, and I'll see you next Thursday for Daniel chapter uh, 10. God bless you.